let's face it, it's only a matter of time before Chris Room takes up gravel racing. Okay, maybe not just yet, but if he does, this is a bike he could ride. The brand new Factor Ostro Gravel, and what a bike it is. And this is just one of six bikes we will discuss in today's video. A roundup of some of the most interesting and exciting new bikes that have launched over the past few weeks and months, but which I must admit slipped underneath my radar, so I'll talk about them in this video. First up, we have the brand new 3T Strada ICR, an update to the original launch way back in 2017. An aero, wide tyre and one by only bike that was billed as a bike of the future. Well, as most of us remember, if you're there when it launched, I was a bike that caused ripples and arguments in social media and websites all around the world. The future wasn't ready for the bike, you weren't ready for the bike. The one by ruffled lots of feathers and the fact the wire tire sat really close to the down tube and a seat tube got lots of people really angry about this design. With this new version, the company isn't calling it the bike of the future, but instead the world's most comfortable aero race bike. A heady claim indeed, and I'll reserve judgment until I get a chance to ride it, which I should do fairly soon as there is one on its way to me very soon. And I did have a good time riding and reviewing the original, despite all the naysayers around one by and the wide tire clearance with the frame, I actually found it a phenomenally fast bike with pretty decent comfort as well. One of the big issues was the cable routing, which has now been resolved on this new bike. So rather than the cables going over the top of the stem and into the top tube, they now go in a, what can only be described as a bulbous head tube design. So it made the most of the new UCI rules and created a head tube that's deeper than it is wide, allowing the cables to go in the front of the bike. So very neat, very clean internal cable routing, but that head tube does give the bike a very distinctive look and to my eyes doesn't look anywhere near as nice as the old bike. But let me know what you think down below. And tire clearance has gone up from 28 to 32, matching the trend for wide tires. 28 is very narrow by today's standards and 13, 32 are very popular on road race bikes. So that's a good move. And the bike will be offered with two by and one by, but they're showing all the press pictures with two by bikes because clearly they don't want a repeat of that previous episode they had when people really focus on the negatives of one by. So offering it with two by and one by keeps all camps happy, whether you're a two by fan or a one by convert. Endurance bikes are still the biggest and most popular category of road bike. That combination of comfort and speed is an absolute winner. And if brand new look 765 Ultiman just launched recently could be an interesting and under the radar choice. I like the T47 bottom bracket being widely adopted by lots of bike brands. We have mudguard mounts, so good for UK riders, space for 34 mm wide tires, and a lightweight claimed 1400 gram frame and fork, and very clean internal cable routing as well. And then a really interesting detail on this bike is something called 3D Wave Tech. The company's name for a special carbon fiber layout designed in their words to dampen the vibrations that can lead to a harsh ride experience. Apparently a 20% improvement over the old bike. Now no details of what this technology actually is, but I guess they've used some special carbon fiber magic to give a smooth ride. We've seen this in the past from Bianchi, probably the best example of using this counter veil technology within the carbon fiber lip to dampen vibrations that come through the frame and fork and give that jittery jarring ride experience on rough roads. Belgian brand Ridley have a good reputation for road bikes and CX bikes and it's hoping it's brand new Griffin all road slash gravel bike will fire up interest in the brand because fair to say interest or awareness of the brand has definitely ebbed away over the last few years. So the Griffin is a big hope for 2023 and it's very much a racy gravel bike but they're calling it an all road bike and all road isn't a new term although some people might think it is. It's been around, doing the rounds for about 10 years or so. When gravel first started arriving, some people tried to coin the term all road as basically a fat tire road bike. Like could do a bit more than road, a bit like gravel and dirt. But as we know, gravel really became really popular, bike packing, adventure and racing, and that really took over from that all road. But some people like Ridley, for example, are trying to bring back the all road term for bikes that fit in a very narrow gap between a road bike and a gravel bike. Whether there's enough space there depends on your point of view and the riding you do. 
but with road bikes having space for 34 38 mil wide tires and gravel bikes having space for anything from 34 to 38 up to 50 and beyond i can't really see how all road can really take off and despite the company calling this an n plus one killer it definitely is very niche tire clearance for example is just 38 and then with mud gas fitted goes down to 32 and to put it in context the J Laverick Jack Disc Titanium All Season Road Bike I reviewed last winter, if you remember that, also has space for a 38mm wide tyre with no mudguards fitted or 32s with mudguards. So, a road bike, a traditional road bike with the same tyre clearance as a supposed all road light gravel bike, which makes you wonder who the bike is for. I don't see it being a hit here in the UK. The riding we have between road and off road is very different muddy, rooty, rocky, and then lumpy, bumpy, pothole roads. But I can see it working in parts of the US where the gravel or dirt roads are smooth enough that you can use a road bike. So this sort of bike with a 35 or 38 mil slick tire, like a gravel slick tire, might be just fine. But fair play to them trying to bring out something a bit different that fits in that narrow gap between a road bike and a gravel bike. And I'm sure some people may find a use for this bike and ultimately, at the end of the day, it's down to you people watching, buying these bikes to decide whether it's the right bike or not. If loads of you buy it, then it'll be a popular bike and more brands might do something similar. But if nobody buys it, then it'll fade away. That's how it works in the bike world. If you buy it, if there's demand for it, they make more of it. If you don't buy it and there's no demand for it, it'll go away. Argonaut is a small US brand that make fully bespoke carbon fiber frames in the US. There aren't many brands doing that same US manufacturing of carbon fiber. And it's nice to see a brand really trying to do that and do it well. And the GR3 is a brand new gravel bike and it looks really interesting and it has some details and specifications we don't see on many other gravel bikes. It's a geometry that really stands out on this bike. A super slack 68.5 degree head angle, which is more what you'd expect on a mountain bike, not a road gravel bike. And then quite short chain stays, 415, to give that combination of a bike that's really stable from that slack head angle when you're going downhill, which is commonly where gravel bikes, due to their road oriented geometry, can feel a bit sketchy and a bit nervous and twitchy. But that slack head angle should give the bike super stable handling when riding downhill, while a short chain stay should keep it reasonably agile and nippy as well. The GR3 has space for up to 50 mil wide tyres, so good options for any gravel tyre to go in this bike. And of course, it has a T47 bottom bracket. And I say of course, because Argonaut, if you remember, worked with Chris King on developing the brand new T47 bottom bracket a few years ago. And it's a standard that's now becoming very popular and even Trek have adopted it on their new road bikes. And if we do ever see Chris Froome riding gravel when he retires from pro road racing, this is a bike he would probably use. The brand new Factor Ostro Gravel, which definitely slipped on the radar last year. So apologies to Factor fans, but here we are. Let's have a closer look. It has all the details that should ensure it's definitely fast. I mean, it's all aero, taking aero cues from their road bikes. So aero profile, seat tube, down tube, seat post, fork stays full internal cable routing as well with that hand of bike and stem. So a very slippery looking bike, a bike that should be fast in the right hands. And away from racing, thankfully we have space for wide tires, up to a 45 mil wide tire would go in this bike. So plenty of options for a nice fat plump tire for all the comfort you want and all the traction you need when riding off-road. And a lightweight frame of 900 grams, so the weight of the bike definitely isn't gonna hold you back. What might hold you back are the fairly high prices. Factor bikes aren't cheap at all, and the price on these are pretty high, it has to be said. And do let me know which of these bikes floats your boat and what bikes I've missed by leaving a comment down below. And if you'd like to look at this hoodie I'm wearing right now and t-shirts, all available right now at the store just below the video, and all proceeds help support the channel. And if you wanna see some other amazing road bikes available in 2023, check the video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.